TBC, it's your boy, Tough Bills, coming back at you guys with yet another video, guys. Welcome back to all my new subscribers here on my channel. Guys, we are at 584 subscribers. Like, <laughs> before I start this video off, I want to let you guys know how grateful I really am for those that actually took their time to smash the subscribe button, hitting the bell on the side, giving my videos thumbs up, leaving comments down in the section down below, and also sharing my videos. I really do love you guys for that. I really, really appreciate it from the bottom side of my heart. I really want to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of September. So let's make it happen. Let's go TBC. By the way, if you want to, want to get merch, link will be down in the description down below for you guys, as well as any of what I talk about in this video today. There's not a lot of videos on YouTube explaining why these codes actually pop on with the 2016 EcoBoost through 2019 but you do get these codes sometimes which are p0303 which is a misfire in cylinder 3 and then you also get a p0316 which is a misfire at the first 1000 revolutions and then as you guys know i do not have active grill shutters on right now which i'm going to be putting those back on if you guys do want a video of how to put the active grill shutters back on or take them off, let me know down in the comment section down below. But we're going to get those back on because the car is going back to CarMax on next Tuesday. This video will be ready posted and ready to go. I just want to throw this video up. That way, if you guys run into this solution too, I'm going to tell you guys what they said afterwards as well. I'm thinking maybe it could be a carbon buildup issue because last time I used that CRC cleaner, the codes went away for a long time and then now they're back. I'm thinking that could be the problem right there is that the carbon buildup is just still happening and it's either clogging an injector or maybe I have a small leak somewhere in between the system of the intercooler or the intake piping, which I'm going to be taking a look at that today. I'm also going to be pulling out the spark plugs. We're going to be taking a look at cylinder 3 spark plug and cylinder 2 spark plug just so I can get a idea of, you know, what this problem could be. I know the boots are factory now. I took out the aftermarket boots from the last time I did this. I know it's not that now. I know it's something to do with something inside the engine. But hopefully we can get this problem resolved. It's not a really big problem, but I can definitely feel it even when I'm driving sometimes I can feel a misfire going on but you know it is what it is we're gonna get this figured out if I can't that's why I scheduled an appointment for it on Tuesday so they can go ahead and do a diagnostic and tell me what the problem of this code could actually be now to take off the front bumper and do all of that stuff is pretty easy guys I just want to explain that part right now it's very easy just make sure you guys get that screw that's on both sides so you don't damage the side right here and you won't be able to put it back on you're gonna have to get clips which will really suck so make sure that you guys take off the little screws on that side this one only goes to the people that have a four cylinder either an EcoBoost or an ST or an RS either one of those what do I have to tell you well the fire pattern for one so this is the front side of the engine, okay? You got these two guys here. You got one, two, three, four. That's how it goes. So let me do that one more time. One, two, three, four. So if you're misfiring on the third cylinder, which is this one, third cylinder, you want to check this boot, check the wire, which is the pigtail, and then you want to go ahead and check the spark plug inside. If you are going to do a compression test, I would take them all out and, and do it that way. But this is cylinder three. So this is the one we're gonna be taking out. I'm gonna check the pigtail. I'm gonna check the connection inside the pigtail and the boot. I'm gonna check all of the above. I'm also gonna check the spark plug as well. So that way I know that the spark is good. The only other thing that it could be, rather it being a leaking hose line or something like that, or Hopefully, it's something that cheap and that easy to fix, but if it's not, I hope that it's it's your guys' is, is just like that. I hope that it's something really simple, something that you guys can go ahead and fix. But I'm going to go ahead, do that. The car's back on the floor. 
active grill shutters are back inside. So I just gotta buckle up the top part and the boots are back on. I went ahead and tightened up her feet. So her feet are good. Um, other than that, I think that's pretty much it guys. We're gonna go ahead and start checking out the ignition on the third side there on cylinder three. We'll check that out. I'm gonna fix that as well. And then we're gonna go on a little cruise see if the active grill shutters code will shut off and go back to normal. I'm hoping that's the case, a scenario for that. And then everything else besides that, I mean, the, the misfire, I don't really know. It's been doing it since the day I got it. Who knows, I already had a compression test done and they are 100% healthy. The only other thing I can think of is, is something's causing it to misfire at the first 1000 RPMs not even Ford was able to figure it out. The only thing that they replaced was a fuel injector and um, the fuel sensor as well. Fuel sensor was definitely bad. It was, I was going lean, very lean. So I'm happy that they fixed that. They all said that it ran good and it drove good, but when they plugged it in, they were like, oh yeah, it's pointing to that fuel sensor there. We gotta replace the fuel pressure sensor and get that resolved. So I'm kind of happy that that is done. That's a brand new part. Now I'm hoping that nothing really serious is going on with my car. I mean, it can happen to anybody's car, especially if you beat on it, you're, you're gonna suspect something going on with it. Keep that in mind, if you beat on your car, I hope you have the money to fix it. I know that some of you guys out there are probably wondering if you guys received this air code on your guys' EcoBoost Mustang or even not even the Mustang because even the F-150s come with active grill shutters too. So if you were looking to delete these, you're gonna get an air when you bring it up on a scanner. You will not get a check engine light. I have not received one of those yet, but I did check my tuner scanner and the only thing that actually really popped up was always these because I had them disconnected and off of the vehicle. And then I've been always receiving, I, for the longest time, even before I even did this, I was getting a misfire issue in cylinder three. These are the steps that you guys can take. These are the steps that the tuner told me that it could be to check everything of this nature. The active grip shutters can and might throw that code because these are meant to close and warm up the vehicle and if it's not doing it then it, it might throw a P0303 or 304 or 306 or whatever the case may be because especially when it's cold and it's at the first 1000 RPMs it will definitely throw it. This is one of the cases right here so I'm going to go ahead and try to put these back on which as you guys can tell they are completely on now. I have them connected and everything. It's not that much of a trouble actually to put them back on. If you guys have to just put them back on unless you are tuned to have these off and that has to mainly be that your tuner has to shut these completely off so that the car doesn't see them. But mine, mine still sees them. On that behalf, I do have an intercool pipe which is that one and it's just a smudge off. A smudge off and I don't know if possibly the air is escaping and that can also cause a misfire too because that's more known as a leak a very small leak can cause a misfire it's the same thing as vacuum so if you if you have a vacuum line that is not screwed down tight enough it will throw that code and that's just that you want to make sure that that's completely on there. You want to make sure that your turbo lines are completely on there. Make sure that they, the hose clamps are on the hose holding it. I would wiggle them around, make sure that they're on. I checked the throttle body already. The throttle body is not loose at all. That's actually pretty tight. They also do say about the air intake. So you want to make, take a look at the air intake and make sure if you guys do have this mod right here, these are pretty cheap. If this is the reason why air is, is escaping and causing the misfire, you can go ahead and take this guy off, put your blow off tube back on. That way you guys can go ahead and test it and see if that code will disappear. I would say drive about 100 miles with this back on 
And if the code doesn't disappear after you're doing all of this, then it could be something more serious going on in the engine. But for me, for that code, because I've seen it many, many times, and how I resolved it was changing the spark plug, putting my old spark plug boots back on, doing the CRC clean stuff. I actually just went through this tube right here and sprayed it because it hits all of the valves on the top, which if you have a very bad carbon buildup on your valves, you're gonna get this air as well. You wanna make sure that you clean up your valves every now and then. I don't suggest putting sea foam in a turbocharged car. Do not use sea foam. Once again, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna say this once again because I've seen people do it, and it's not really healthy for this motor. Not only is it not healthy for the motor, but when you use sea foam, it doesn't have the chemicals in it to basically turn those chunks, those very very hard chunks that are carbon buildup inside of your motor. They don't turn them into anything. It just tr leaves it there. It just basically kicks it right off. And then once you kick that off of your valves, it goes through a whole process, which goes right out through your turbo right here, down to your exhaust. If you're, if it hits your turbo, you gotta keep that in mind. These have dual, which they're not dual twin turbo. A lot of people think that it's twin turbo when it's not. It's just a single turbo, but two fins are basically in here. Your first one will be up right here up front. Your second one's right in the back. It just gives you more boost. That's all it pretty much does. When it goes through, it's gonna go through this one right here, down here, and it's gonna exit out through your exhaust. So anything that hits those fins, it can damage them. It can basically crack one of the fins in there. Sea foam, no go, don't use sea foam. CRC cleaner, I've been using that for a very long time, especially on turbocharged vehicles having no problem with turbos at all because CRC cleaner doesn't leave them has heavy chunks it actually grinds them down to the bit of mineral and pretty much turns them into a liquid or in other cases like a glob glob hitting those fins is better than something like a rock hitting those fins that's that's very bad keep that in mind because those fins are very thin you don't want to mess them up. What I'm going to go ahead and do now is I need to go down here. I need to fix this intercooler pipe and push it in more and go ahead and tighten that hose back on again. And then I'm also going to maybe see if I can push this guy down a little bit more. And because it is lifted right here on this side, so I'm thinking air is probably escaping it, which is causing a vacuum leak. I want to fix that a little bit. And then we're going to go ahead, put the car back together, and I'm going to take it for a road cruise, which it's getting pretty dark outside right now. It's going to be very hard for you guys to even see me, but I'm going to try and get my GoPro, and I'll explain what I'm feeling, or how the car is feeling to me, because I've already owned this car for a year, and I'm pretty smart when it comes to this kind of stuff. But other than that, guys, we're going to go ahead, get it all buckled up, I'm going to check those two spark plugs and the boots as well and make sure that those are fine. This is, this, keep in mind, my car only has 50,000 miles on it. It's technically brand new, but when you start modifying a vehicle, you start running into problems and you really want to keep that in mind. That's why for me, I really didn't just spill everything inside the motor and go, you know what? I'm just going to modify this. I'm going to modify that. No, I did the necessities which in EcoBoost Mustangs, you wanna run this catch can right here or you will get misfires all the time because of carbon buildup. Catch can is very important. I would run them on this side and the passenger side, which I have, but I haven't had the chance to put it in yet. So there will be a video eventually of me putting the catch can on this side, but I'm going to be trading this one out for an actual catch can eventually. Um, I don't know which catch can, if you guys have any ideas or suggestions of what catch can you guys think that I should put in here let me down down in the comment section down below and I will go ahead and check it out and see what I can do as far as that goes at this point of view guys I finally got this thing buckled down there correctly now as you can tell it's not leaning forward like it was it's actually sitting on there flush now 
You want to make sure you have one of those on there, either a hose clamp or the factory hose clamp, it doesn't really matter. As long as it's some type of hose clamp, you want to keep that from falling out. And then also, I checked cylinder three, I took the boot off, and what you're looking for on the boot, once again, you're looking for any cracks inside of the wire part, which is the pigtail. So you want to make sure that there's no cracks inside the wiring right here. Check the inside, which is this piece right here. You want to make sure that that is okay. Make sure there's no cracks in it or anything. Make sure that the wires are all good inside of it. Check the boot as well. Go ahead and plug that girl back in. Then what you're checking for on the boot here is pretty much anything. Uh, it can be cracks up here. It can be cracks on the actual boot itself. So if the ignition coil is okay, then the boot must be damaged. So check making sure that the boot is fine. These boots can come off of these ignition coils, so you can pull them off and make sure that the connections are good and they're not covered in crap or something, you know, something can stop a, a spark instantly. Make sure you guys check that. Check the whole entire boot. You're checking the whole entire rim of it. Make sure there's no cracks in it on the sides of it. Make sure there's no cracks. And then you're going to go ahead and pull out your plug. And the plug, you want to make sure that it's not also cracked. So if it's cracked on the white part anywhere, throw it away, get a new one. That is a bad plug. You want to check also the whole entire bottom part. Make sure that the gap is still there and it's a good plug. You want to make sure the electrode is okay and not damaged. Because if that's damaged, once again, spark plug is garbage. Throw it away, get a new one. The best place to order spark plugs from if you are trying to go a step colder would be CJ Pony Parts American Muscle or another place you can get them is O'Reilly's but you'll have to gap them yourself which means you have a chance of breaking the electrode. Just keep that in mind. But I would just order them from CJ Pony Parts. Keep safe knowing that you know they're got proper and you don't have to worry about them you know, breaking or being broken by the time you get them. That is the best place to actually get those. CJ Pony Parts puts out a lot of good products. If you have not checked out their website, I'm going to go ahead and link that down in the description down below of where you guys can actually get the spark plugs. So it'll be a link to the spark plugs. But you guys can go ahead and browse through their products and check it out for yourself, guys. They Once again, they sell really amazing catch cans. They also sell amazing ignition coils. I've had a pair and I ran them. They worked beautifully. You guys can go ahead and check that out for yourself. Intercoolers, everything, they have it all there. I'm gonna go ahead and close the lid. We're gonna go ahead and take her for a drive. See if I feel anything different now. Uh, the after grill shutters are on. I fixed that intercooler piping. I've also fixed that. I checked that ignition coil and the plug. That is all. That's all we can check for this code. Uh, if you still cannot resolve this problem, I'm not saying that I resolved it, until I test drive it and I run the code again see if it disappeared if it did not disappear don't freak out if you're still in warranty put it back to stock take it in get it looked at well you guys should know what to do at this point and if you don't well that means that you're new if you guys like this video for all the newcomers and OGs give this video a big thumbs up let me know what you guys thought about it down in the comment section down below if you and I mean yes I mean you. If you are stepping in for the first time, make sure you guys go ahead and smash that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell on the side as well. That way you guys get notified when I do post a video or in the future, go live. Who can ever forget about the final, most biggest one that everybody could do and should do, which is share this video with all your friends, family, relatives, folks, floor, guitar, Bed, sheets, I don't care. Whatever you guys want to share this with, just make sure you guys go ahead and share it. Get it out there. Let's grow TBC. Get it bigger than any other YouTuber channel on YouTube. I'll see you guys in the next banger.